Good morning. That's better than a cup of coffee right there, isn't it? It's like the one thing. What is the one thing that everybody says to everybody almost more than anything else these days? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Nice job, Jennifer. Your passion is showing. Beautiful. This week, we're talking about percolating. I have a prop. This is what it looks like. This is what we consider percolating. And really what happens when we percolate is you put stuff in there and then it grows and it becomes more what it is that, that we're looking for. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no, there's more. We're also talking about percolating your passion with your purpose. And this is this whole banner of living your life out loud this year. How many of you feel you have a passion? Or maybe, how many of you feel that you just have passion? See the difference? You have passion. It's not necessarily a single thing. What about purpose? How many feel you have a purpose? And how many feel you're just living with purpose? It's different, but I'm glad that you feel that way. And I'm not saying that it's not true, but a lot of people don't feel that way. Do you feel that your passion and your purpose actually line up? Okay. So, and when we are aware, as those of us who are down this path are aware, we can see more of that kind of thing because we know what we're doing and we know why we're doing it. And that's kind of... I was going to say it's important, but it feels really nice to know that we're here on purpose, with a purpose, and doing stuff that's important and that feels right. How do we find passion? You just go out to passionsareus.com. <laughs> Duh, right? Or you could go find passion on Amazon. I went out and looked. I found passion passion of Christ. I found X-rated passion, books and movies. I found R-rated books and movies about passion, rom-coms, which I guess is G-rated movies about passion, passion fruit, passion fruit extract. There's a lot out there. And I'm sure it's no surprise that you can find just about anything you want on Amazon. Check it out sometime. Next time you're not doing anything. Go to Amazon. Ask for something strange. I found sod. <laughs> Did you know that there's actually a flexible solar panel for camping? Found it. I also found first base. <laughs> right? Have fun with that. But I digress. You've heard speakers say that, right? That little jam on Amazon... That was an example of a digression. I just thought I'd point that out. I'm going to refocus now. Back to passion. How do we know, actually, when we are passionate about something? Passion itself is designed as a strong and barely controllable emotion. There's a Rod Stewart song called Passion that he says, some people die and kill for passion. Nobody admits that they need passion. I'm not going to sing like Rod, by the way. Some people are scared of passion. And I've asked this question before, and it's a very valid question. What are we afraid of? In this case, why are we afraid of passion? It is one of our true very, very deep emotions. It can sometimes be overwhelming. It's so powerful. The Greek god of love, they've got many actually, but one of them is called Eros. More precisely, Eros is the god of passion and physical desire. They have a book called the Theogony, which 
shows the genealogy of how the earth came to be in the universe through their version of Greek gods. And it explains Eros like this. Without warning, Eros selects his targets and forcefully strikes at their hearts, bringing confusion and irrepressible feelings. And in the word of Hesiod, he loosens the limbs and weakens the mind. There you go. I think I've hit a chord. The gods were afraid of Eros. The gods themselves were afraid of this all-encumbering passion, all-encumbering involvement in whatever was going on. And then the lack of ability to actually stay present, that actually scared them. When fully engaged in any activity that has us in a place of passion, in a place where it feels like we're just along for the ride, do you like that? It's a little out of control. But do you feel in some way when that happens that you're actually aligned with your passion? It's funny, maybe not in a minute, in the moment, because you're so involved, you might not even be aware of it. But when you come out of it, when you come out of it on the other side, then you'll realize that you are aligned passion and purpose. And that's that zone. That's that being in the zone. That's really being completely and totally at one with spirit and soul. Because we just are as if, and our human ego has kind of stopped to function for a moment. I've almost experienced that barely controlled emotion. I'm going to share a story with you this one time. I was meditating, and I had this feeling. You ever have this feeling meditating when you start to drop into that lower level? It's a beautiful thing. And I, my onosecond reptilian fight-or-flight reaction kicked in. Do you know what an onosecond is? You know what a nanosecond is? This one's faster. You know when you hit that delete button? Oh, no! <laughs> but it's too late because you've already hit it. So that's your oh, no second right there. Anyway, ever since I learned about meditation and the possibilities that we experience through that, I've always wanted to go there. I just think that's really, it sounds really cool. I wanted to experience that deeper space. So what happened, I started to feel it. And in that oh, no section of what I call thought reaction and reaction thought, I pulled myself out. Oh, man. I really want to go there. That was a flight of fight. That was my human instinct kicking in. And of course, I sat there meditating because I'm going to get back there. Didn't work. Someday, we'll get there. This is heavy stuff. There's a woman out there by the name of Elizabeth Gilbert who has massive amounts of intelligence and knowledge, and she shares them with us. I was listening to her podcast, and in this one particular episode, she was kind of berating herself. She's very passionate. Ever since she was little, I'm Elizabeth Gilbert, and I'm a writer, and that's it. And so she was you know, like bullheadedly running through it without ever stopping. Her whole life has been that one passion. She's been lager focused, and she got lucky, her words, with her first book, Eat, Pray, Love. So how's anyone going to top that? She also realizes that it's probably not possible, so she's not even going to argue with that one. Kind of in an aside, that's one thing that happened to Michael Jackson, because when Thriller hit, he went and continued to try and hit that. Sometimes we just hit lightning in a bottle and just enjoy it because it's very cool, and it doesn't always happen. So she believes, because this was perfect for her, that everyone should be focused. Everyone should find their passion, and they should nail it and do nothing but. And then some brave soul said, you know what? I don't have one. I don't even know what it is. I don't even know what it feels like. And I don't feel right when you're telling me what I should do. Elizabeth was taken aback. Obviously, she doesn't want to make anybody feel less than, 
just because she's excited about what she's doing. So this is what she learned. There are folks who don't have passion. Right? And if you're one of those who don't have a passion, you don't know if you have a passion, and if you have a passion, you don't know what it is, you know what? That's okay. It really is. Because here you are, in your journey, in your space, trying to determine if you've got something that the world thinks you need to have. Don't do that. Don't pretend. And don't try to bring upon yourself what you think everybody else thinks that you should be or do. If you don't have a passion, that's okay. Just know that. Let it go. Walk your own path. Nobody else's. It's hard enough to walk our own path, right? What you may discover about your passion, and some of you actually raised your hands about that, is you're passionate about life itself. Not anything in particular, just the whole thing. But as we look inside, because those of us here and out there, or out here, are looking, are open. And that's a beautiful thing. It's a great place to be, again, in my opinion. If you're not there, that's okay too. But let it be. Quite honestly, to people who have hard, heavy passions and they're driving it through, they probably wish that at some point in their life that wasn't the case. We're driving and trying to make this happen. We probably feel that as musicians, right? You know, I'd like to just take Friday night off. Can't do it. Got to go play. But that's okay. Some people are built for that, and some people aren't. And if you don't have a passion, and you don't know what it is, that's totally okay. So let that percolate. Do you have a question? Okay. Then that's okay. And, and just own that. Don't think you have to do something that you're not. We're percolating. A kinder, more gentler path towards passion discovery might be curiosity. What interests you? When we allow ourselves to be open like that, we allow ourselves to be aware of and embrace whatever it is that shows up in our path. And that could be actually amazing. It could really throw you for a loop. But if you listen, then if you follow, it's a beautiful thing. You know how sometimes you can't figure out this problem and it comes to you in a shower? It's hard to write it down, but... That's the kind of awareness that comes to you and we're not really actively going after it because sometimes it just happens and that's okay too. But be aware of it and honor that and go after that and see if that works. And if you have nothing more than just following your interest and following that next silver object, whatever that is, that curiosity, you're going to live a very interesting life. You're going to find after a while that you've met all kinds of people, you've had all kinds of experiences, you'll enhance your sphere of knowledge because you might even become a master at trivia. Go down to the bar and win $4.35. And maybe, just maybe, you'll have learned some lessons. So without even trying, you will have gained some life wisdom. It's just going to happen. And all you're doing is following your interests, following your curiosity, and allowing whatever will be, will be. And if you just do this, one interest, one curious thing at a time, all of a sudden your passion's going to come right up and take you completely by surprise. And then there you go. Wouldn't that be cool? So think about that and just open yourself to the possibility that something's going to light you up and you just don't know what it is yet. 
one way to awaken, maybe, to open the door to discovery of your passion, is to substitute that word for joy. What brings you joy? What brought you joy as a child? What makes your heart sing? And it might be something completely different, so you got to be aware of that. What did you want to be when you grew up before someone told you that it wasn't possible? I heard this story, this guy saying, Mommy, I want to be a rock and roll star when I grow up. And she said, I'm sorry, honey, you can't do both. I think I've shared this story with you about my sixth grade teacher who decided I couldn't sing. So I'm 11, and he's the all-knowing teacher, and I listened. But then I decided he was wrong, and I sing anyway. And it still surprises me. It still surprises me sometimes when people think that I'm good, but I don't care, because it gives me joy. I appreciate it. I don't know if my mic's ever been turned on, but I still go out there. And if I was aware of the mystic Osho in the sixth grade, I would have learned to, and this is what he said, stand alone like a lion and live your life according to your light. Find the light, and it will show you the path. The path that is shown by your light is the only path that is right for you. What others have been telling you to do might be right for them, but it cannot be right for you. Let that percolate. Passion is cause. Pure soul manifesting effects into our lives through us as us. I've been talking to people about passion, and many people think that passion is what is created. My garden is passion. The art is passion. Those are the effects. Passion is the cause. The results are the effects. And everybody's, again, everybody's passion is different. It feels the same. It kind of comes from the same place. But because we are all different, it manifests different. I often use this example. We have a number of piano players that hang out in the church here, and you think we're all the same, but we're not because we're humans and we manifest the same passion coming from the same place, but differently according to who we are. I'm not sure that we find passion. It finds us. It knocks on the door. All we have to do is answer it. I had a visit last week with a woman dripping with passion. She was not satisfied with her work, with her job, actually what she was doing. She had previously been a teacher, got out of that, and when she was away for that for a while, she started to see, because she's got young kids, she started to see what was missing in our basic K-12 education, and her passion, this idea of a better education just lit her up. And she's right now in the midst of starting a business that teaches kids how to learn, how to apply strategic, out-of-the-box thinking, and she's supplying tutoring and uh, basic life skills as an addendum to current state-mandated uh, curriculum. This labor of love actually opens in a couple of weeks. I went and saw her building. She's the magnificent thing that has presented itself out of this one little idea is how can I make my kids' education a little bit better? Has now blossomed into a full-blown business that's already bigger than anything she could have imagined. And it's not even open yet. There was another half of that passion because she wanted to have breakfast with her daughter. And she wanted to be home for dinner. And her job didn't allow that. So those two things collided together to become a bigger life purpose. 
Same thing happened to me when I was cleaning windows. Something inside of me was starting to drive me in another direction. I remember the thought as being, I'd like to help people in a little bit more of a deeper meaning, in a little bit more place where people live. So I followed the path, and here I am. That was the path, like Osho said. That was the path that was shown to me. So I followed that. I had a passion. I had this inner feeling, what I call the niggling disquiet, that there was something out there for me, starting to form up as a passion, but I didn't know what that was. So I just followed that next indicated step. And here I am. Because what I really wanted to do was talk to you guys. Do you know what your purpose in life is? That's a question that people ask often throughout their lives. And keep asking. Because it changes. Like your values change as you grow. Your purpose also might change as you grow, as you're experienced, as you see what's out there, as you know more about yourself. Things absolutely do grow. Steve Jobs said, if you haven't found it yet, keep looking. Don't settle. Because with all matters of the heart, you will know it when you find it. Or you will know it when it finds you. If you're in a position that you'd like to know and you don't know, ask Gus. For people who might not know Gus, that thing that is, some people call it God, some people call it universe, some people call it spirit. Gus. I like to name it. It gives it a friendly thing. It's my buddy. How you doing? Did you ever meet Gus? So ask Gus, get quiet first, get into your space, whatever that means to you, and ask Gus, what is spirit looking to express through me, as me? And then wait for the answer. It might come in the shower. There's a visioning process that we've done a couple of times and I'm sure it'll get done again. That, that purpose helps you to get together and, and figure out what it is that might be next for you, which is another point. Whatever you decide today, it's not necessarily the rest of your life. It's just that next thing. And of course, if there's every moment of now, it's the only thing that exists, but that's a whole nother talk. I believe that the reason that we are here on earth, the purpose for us is much bigger. It has something to do with capital L love. Is that the right way for you guys? Capital L love, which is what we consider the love of the universe. That's another name for Gus's love. So I think what we have to do here is something to have to do with giving love, receiving love, knowing love, being love, being that light, being that energy. I call it being the rock in the pond because as each of us drops who it is that we are into that pond of life, what is it that ripples out? And if it's love, then we're already doing a good thing. A lot of people think that our purpose for being here might be, I don't know, cure cancer or save the rainforest, which is all really good things to do, by the way, while we're here. But this concept of embracing, being, and sharing love is much bigger and more expansive than our time here on earth. And yes, we do live here and we want to make the best effort of it that we can. But think of this bigger picture. As long as we're here in earth school, let's do these little things. But that allows us the consciousness to be able to know and understand and embrace these bigger pictures and incorporate them into the part of us that we can only really find if we're paying attention to it. I had fun with this one. If you were to percolate on the postulate of purpose, if you were to percolate on the postulate of purpose, 
how might that color your everyday experience? If you knew who you were, if you knew what you were doing and you knew why, then what kind of different decisions might you make? What kind of a different life might you live? Might you be more open to some sort of passion knocking on your door? And then that would come through the perception of what you believe your purpose is. When passion hits you, you'll know. Remember Eros, limber limbs? How do you know this? Pay attention to what you're feeling. A lot of times we don't like to do that because it doesn't feel good. But that's not a bad thing. That's our opinion that it doesn't feel good. It's not the feeling that we're supposed to pay attention to. That's just a signpost or someone knocking on your door. Hello, something in here needs some attention. So go below the feeling and figure out what it is that's making you feel like that. And then you'll start to understand more about it. And that starts with awareness. Think of the pure wonder and inner joy, passion, excitement that comes out unabashedly through children. Wouldn't it be nice to bottle that up and drink from it 30 years later? Do you remember what that is? We teach that Gus doesn't give us any ideas to do something that we can't accomplish. If that idea seems so far-fetched, come on, Gus, are you kidding me? We got that because it's our path. That idea has come to us because it is something that we accomplish. It has come to us because it might be something that we kind of need to do for some reason. And you might not know what that reason is. Do it anyway, because it's here for you. All you need to do is take that next indicated step. I have this thing from the Science of Mind textbook. I'm going to paraphrase it. When Gus gives us the passion for a new possibility, it comes with precise and clear directions for building a new matrix of mind that leads to manifestation. We are shown how to activate the constructive imagination and how to hold in thought and feeling the intention and energy for co-creation. It shows us how to stop boring God by waking up to the fact that we are here in God's school to learn the principles of word making, world making, and the evolving of self and society. Evolution is seen to follow involution where we discover that our minds are stargates. Our minds are stargates. That's a cool idea, huh? We're the gate, or we have access to the gate. And that gate opens us up to that higher possibility of vibration. If we are these stargates, we can walk through them anytime we want. Isn't that exciting? So what's stopping us? Let that percolate. Quick reiteration. Gus will not give us anything to do that we cannot accomplish. The idea will be there, and if we listen, the steps will be there. Not all of them, just the next one. But we can trust that. I've learned that. I've had three or four times in my life where I can absolutely say it was not my idea. It was not given to me, and I didn't know how to do it. But I followed it. So for what it's worth, for me, it works. And there's another thing. Just because you've identified your passion doesn't mean you don't have to do the work. In practitioner school, we call it treat and move your feet. 
You still have to do the work. But identifying it and having it align with your purpose, even though your purpose right now may be just to say yes, to just to see what might be next. If that's all, then you'll find out that your enthusiasm about the things you love, about your passion, drives things to you like a magnet. People, things, money, time, whatever you need, when you're ready, it will present itself to you. There's this French general, Ferdinand Falk, who said the most powerful weapon on earth is the human soul on fire. And we've seen it so, so many times. And that soul on fire in you is your burning passion. I asked Gus for a way to end this talk. I was told not to end it. <laughs> because the journey of passion and purpose, quite honestly, is a never-ending adventure. But I actually do have to stop talking at some point. Let's feel into the awareness of where we are on our journey. Embrace that. Accept that. Notice the signs. Listen to that still, small voice, and that will lead you to an answer. You may have heard me share this quote by Howard Thurman. You're going to hear it again, because sometimes we need to be reminded. Don't ask what the world needs. Ask what lights you up and go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Passion, purpose. What the world needs is people who have come alive. Percolate on that. And so it is. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And we'll take a moment and listen to some nice piano music. knowing that spirit is here in this room as all of the energy of the universe and as every single one of us. And knowing that the spirit that we call Gus is here for our best purpose and our life-affirming passion. And what I know for everybody here is that we are passionate people and we embrace that and we accept that we look out for it and live it and as we do that we live a life of purpose peace and as we do this our example gives other people the opportunity to find themselves and we do raise the vibration of the planet. And that's a beautiful thing. Knowing that this idea comes from divine mind and we're blessed to be open to it and hearing it, I thank that spirit that is. And I plant it gently into the fertile fields that is the action and activity of the law itself so that it can grow and become much bigger than we can even imagine. And it still is Gus through us. Knowing that this is the truth, I release it and allow it to be. And if you'll anchor it with me and say, and so it is. <laughs>